What's up, GQ? I'm James Laporta. I'm a former U.S. Marine infantryman, and this is The Breakdown. First up, Jarhead. I don't even know how many Jarheads that they're up to now, but it has nothing to do with the original Jarhead. There is one Jarhead. All the others are bull****. For a lack of a better term. So this is one of the more accurate movies. You are no longer black or brown or yellow or red. You are now green. Before I've even started, uh, I'm seeing things that are standing out to me. His haircut is correct. Um, when, when guys enter boot camp, the first thing you're doing is you're getting your head shaved. Uh, the uniform is good. It, it is accurate in terms of the time period, uh, so early 90s. What is absolutely ugly is the back. Uh, barracks are... <laughs> Uh, especially recruit barracks are not that uh, white. Uh, it looks like they're in a mental ward. The blankets are usually green. They're like these wool green blankets that look like they're straight out of like the Cold War. So that is what stands out to me. I mean, what is accurate is, yeah, the bunks are made and that is exactly how you would hang your towels. Usually uh, some guys, they wouldn't even get under their bed because when you're getting woken up at like 3.30, 4 in the morning by drill instructors, uh, you don't have a lot of time. You have to, everything is sort of on a countdown. And so you, they don't even get under the covers. They just sort of sleep on top of their bed. You know, so it's already made and they just have to sort of straighten it up. You are now green. You are light green or dark green. Do you understand? Sir, yes sir. Go back. Okay, so that is all accurate. Uh, that's called standing on line. Uh, you have to do that a lot. Uh, I used to hide behind a stanchion. If you're lucky, your rack is near one. And so when the drill instructor is sort of looking down the line like that, so you can sort of like lean back and hide. And in this, there, you don't have those stanchions, but that is accurate uh, in terms of guys on both sides sort of staring at each other, not moving, and you're just sort of hoping nobody, a drill instructor doesn't see you glancing down the line. Do you have a girlfriend, Swafford? Sir, yes, sir! Yes, again, mother Jody's banging her right now. Get on your face and give me 25 for every okay. time she gets Pause it. In terms of the yelling, that, that's accurate. It sort of depends on the person. So because there's been so many sort of incidents that have happened, there's a lot of oversight in terms of the behavior of drill instructors. Like, drill instructors are not supposed to be cussing. So a lot of drill instructors, you'll, you'll hear them get around it like, God dong, or, or, you know, or, uh, or something like that. But usually a drill instructor would look around to make sure, like, no higher-ups are there, and they would, you know, they'll still cuss. This again, mother Jody's banging her right now. Get on your face and give me 25 for every time she gets this month. Down on your face! Oh! Go back. Jody is a real thing. Uh, Jody in the Marine Corps is almost like an uh, urban myth. Jody is the person to where if you're deployed or you're at boot camp or you're out in the field training, Jody is the guy who's back home uh, taking your wife out on a date or uh, having sexual intercourse with your girlfriend. That is a pile of dog shit. Sir, the recruit's never been good at drawing, sir! Why the f are you my scribe then? Isn't my scribe supposed to know how to draw? In terms of him being a scribe, that's a real thing. There's also artist recruits, and so they draw all the art. Uh, the drawings are always something to deal with either war or death. That's what they tend to draw for the drawing instructors because they look cool. Can't think what I'm giving you a few love taps? How the f are you going to fire your rifle when grenades are going off in your face? What the f are you even doing here? Sir, I got lost on the way to college, sir! Yeah, that, that's happened. Um, again, not commonplace amongst both bases and not commonplace amongst drone truckers. They actually have a card in terms of how long they can make a recruit do push-ups, make a recruit do sit-ups. There's a lot of regulation, uh, but I mean, even in perfect worlds where there are systems in place to not allow things to happen, things happen. Like a drone instructor slamming someone's head into a board. It stop right there. Uh, this is, uh, even though this is very subtle, this is incredibly accurate. Uh, so this is uh, what is known as a boot drop. So basically what has occurred is th these Marines have graduated boot camp, right? Uh, from there, they'll have like a week off 
I think it's like 10 days. And then from there, they'll go to the School of Infantry. But the reason I wanted to pause this is because there is a fear in all these Marines. Uh, and it's the same fear that I had. Those Marines standing on sort of the catwalks of the upper decks are looking down at these brand new guys. You can imagine some of them are already veterans themselves from war. And so you're just staring at these guys who are going to eat you alive. I was severely hazed uh, sort of when I first showed up to my first unit. You know, it took me many, many years to realize after that that it was that they were dealing with things that they probably should have been in therapy for. It wasn't because me being the new guy, it was because they had just come back from seeing their friends die in Iraq. <laughs> That is accurate. It's one of those things that is not commonplace across the entire Marine Corps, but has it happened? Absolutely. So they'll take literally a, an iron and they'll bend it into to spell out USMC and they will brand people. Now, again, this is not a commonplace thing. I did not see it in my time and I, I served from 2006 to 2014, but I've seen pictures of it. That is accurate for the early 90s and even into the 80s. I mean, I wasn't branded, but uh, so, something similar in terms of sort of the gang mentality. Uh, we were training out in the field. I'm still a, a new Marine. Someone had found out that I had a huge fear of snakes. I had six senior guys hold me down and they found these snakes out in the woods. And I mean, I was, I was fighting tooth and nail. It was at least one that he put on my chest and I was freaking out. You know, and then someone said, hey guys, knock it off. We gotta go have a, we have a briefing to go to. <laughs> you know, in the field before we were supposed to run our range. Uh, so again, I, I didn't get branded, but that is sort of mentality of like the senior guys ganging up on a, on, on a new guy, uh, that's accurate. Next up, stripes. Left, right, left, right, left, right. You stand in place. Left, right, left, right, left, right, left, right, left, forward. All right, let's rewind that. So in marching, you're supposed to start on your left foot. Everything has some sort of meaning behind it. You're judged down to the inch, you know, in terms of badges and ribbons have to be at a certain inch. The guy in front of you is supposed to be 40 inches from your chest. Everything has a structure to it. Uh, but it takes a while for some people to get the hang of marching. Drone instructors have a couple of tricks. Because at boot camp, it's not just the recruits that are getting judged, the higher command authority is actually judging the drill instructors themselves. So drill is a huge part of that. Uh, so far, everything is accurate. Uh, there is a comedic element. Guys looking around, like laughing and stuff like that, there'd be drill sergeants probably screaming at them. <laughs> Pause it. While a funny scene, uh, no guy is gonna just start singing. The drill sergeant is in charge of that, and if some random recruit just started singing in the middle of his formation, uh, he wouldn't be singing for long. Do we sing? Yes. Singing is common in the military, across the military services. You wouldn't belt out if the right senior enlisted soldier or Marine or officer is standing around because it is incredibly vile. All right, let's fast forward. Pause. All right, this is very much like a, a director, like, so let's make it look like a really active military base where, you know, there's formations going every which way. And it happens, but it's like, uh, this comes off as fake to me. All these tanks driving by and all these formations and you know, all at the same time, because you gotta think about it. Bases themselves are also small cities. There are tons of civilians that work on base. Yeah, overall, uh, they got the basic idea right, but they are taking what we would call artistic liberties. Next up, Hacksaw Ridge. It's a true story. Desmond Doss, yep, Medal of Honor recipient, World War II. He, and so he served as a combat medic, but at that time, combat medics didn't carry weapons. They just tended the wounded. They wanted to put him on the front lines and be in the infantry. And he was a conscientious objector and went to a court martial, uh, but he won. Uh, constitutionally, they were, the army was trying to, uh, were violating his, his rights, uh, but he went on to, to earn the Medal of Honor. Yeah, so real story. Um, and a crazy story. Come on, ladies, pick it up! Move it, move it! I want to see some fire here! A little hustle! 
Show me something! Run like you need it! Down, down, down! Let's go with fast time, boys! Those obstacles, uh, I've seen them. It really depends on the base, but those are common. Even, you know, the, the, the sort of where they have to climb up and go down. These are specifically called circuit courses, or this could even pass for the O course, which is an obstacle course. Do guys usually race on obstacle courses? Uh, so yeah, especially if it's like a timed event, you know, you have this long to get through the obstacle course. So he's got a clipboard right there. It's a timed event. So yeah, people are racing to try to get the best time. <laughs> oh, heartbreak rage, yeah. Oh, oh, what kills me about this. The one thing I've never been able to live down about this movie is, uh, if I remember correctly, there's supposed to be a Camp Lejeune. There is not a single mountain near Camp Lejeune, North Carolina. Obviously, they're in California. That ruins it for me. <laughs> Accurate, this is not boot camp. They're already in the fleet. You know, they're shooting M16A1s came out of the Vietnam War. Uh, a lot of people don't know that the, um, the lower half of an M16A1 in Vietnam what, is plastic and actually it was developed by Mattel. So this is all accurate. This is a regular firing range. It's common in boot, both boot camp and in the fleet. So what's not accurate is you'd have way more people uh, because, um, you know, shooting guns, safety is paramount and things can go wrong when people start shooting weapons. So that's why there'd be way more people. That's accurate. So those are called the pits. And actually that one guy, one person just put up a lollipop. There are these carriages down there in the pits. You can see them. There's Marines down there. They're putting targets up. Those are point targets and they're bringing them down. So if someone shoots, they'll bring it down, they'll mark where the shot was and they'll put it back up and show where the shooter shot. But uh, that's all accurate. There's a red line in the pits. And if you stay behind that red line, you won't get shot. However, uh, I was on the range once, uh, a drill instructor got shot in the leg. So the round hit the carriage, the, like the, either the left or right side of the carriage that's holding the target, and, and ricocheted and hit him in the leg, despite him being behind the red line. Nothing wrong with that rifle. Keep it tight. My weapon's jammed. First, uh, I want to know what, <laughs> I would love to know what yard line they're on where he hit that. So we shoot from the 200 yard line, the 300 and the 500 yard line. It's because I'm questioning that accuracy. Putting that aside, uh, people flagging the line uh, happens all the time. And it is scary. They lack muzzle awareness. They lack just, common sense thinking of like, I need to keep my weapon pointed down range. I mean, they would be immediately kicked off the range because that is incredibly egregious uh, and incredibly dangerous. But yeah, that happens a lot. <laughs> Profile's never gonna make it back to the barracks. Powers is cold-blooded, man. What is inaccurate right there is for as rough as and disciplined as Clint Eastwood's character is, and he's trying to instill discipline into this recon platoon, he would not have them uh, walking around without their chin straps undone. I mean, if you ever watch John Wayne movies, he always had his chin strap undone. Middle of combat, and somehow his helmet never falls off. All right, next up, Full Metal Jacket. Ali Emery was, uh, there's a great story about how he sort of worked his way into getting this role. He was the military advisor for Stanley Kubrick on, on this movie. He was not meant to be in the movie, but the actor that they had hired to be the drill instructor, it just wasn't that. And Harley Emery was in the Marine Corps, uh, was a staff sergeant, and was a drill instructor in real life. And he just had that sort of rhythm. Drill instructors have a certain rhythm to how they speak, how they yell. Drill instructors are putting on a character. Nobody's walking around angry all the time like that. Private Pyle, if there is one thing in this world that I hate, it is an unlocked footlocker. You know that, don't you? Sir, yes, sir. If it wasn't kids like you, there wouldn't be any thievery in this world, would there? Sir, no, sir. Get down! Well, now, let's just see if there's anything missing. That is no different 
from then to when I went through boot camp in 2006. That is completely accurate. There have been many a people who have gotten their complete footlocker wrecked by a drone instructor. I've seen complete rooms wrecked by drone instructors for a towel being out of place or a, or a rack not being made correctly. Uh, and so if there was a footlocker that was unlocked, well, we gotta see if anything is missing and they are going to dump your all over the floor. And then they're gonna give you like 30 seconds to collect it all and to put it back in the same order. Usually, if it happens to one person, it's going to happen to the rest of the platoon. You do everything as a unit. There isn't an individual. Everything is done as a team. And so if one person's getting punished, at some point, the rest of the platoon is gonna get punished. So you're only as strong as your weakest link. That's sort of the whole idea. But uh, now drill instructors, um, it's actually a really, it's a really hard life. Uh, you, drill instructors, their first cycle, lose an incredible amount of weight. I knew one guy who lost literally like 30 pounds inside of three months. I mean, because it was just nonstop. Your job is really to make everyone's life miserable and just to go around and yell all the time. You people have not given private pile the proper motivation. Pause. Absolutely accurate. When he says you have not given private pile the proper motivation, there's a subtext to that. He's speaking in code. And the way I see it, ladies, you owe me for one jelly donut. Now get on your faces. Open your mouth. They're paying for it. You eat it. Ready? Exercise. One, two, three, four. Pause. Hazing will be disguised by other names, such as training or motivation. But what they really mean is we need to haze him into compliance. And that's what he's really saying there. I once got, I think, I think it was nine stitches under this eye. I wasn't doing a push-up right. And I got kicked in the face by a private who I outranked, but he had been to Iraq and I hadn't. So despite me outranking him, uh, I didn't in terms of the social hierarchy. Full Metal Jacket overall is, is accurate, especially for the time. So this is occurring during Vietnam. Full Metal Jacket is probably responsible for recruiting tons of Marines into the Marine Corps. It's the movie I watched. When, when they're thinking about going into the Marine Corps, they look at Full Metal Jacket, you know, or they look at Full Metal Jacket and they're like, well, I'm not gonna go in the Marine Corps, I'm gonna go in the Air Force or the Navy, you know, some other service. There were some egregious moments, but uh, most of what I saw is taken from real life. And I think when, you know, when, when service members or veterans are, you know, looking at TV shows or looking at military movies, that's sort of what we're looking for. Even if that didn't happen to us, as long as it falls into the realm of something that could happen or that realm of possibility, we'll let it slide. What we can't let slide a lot of times is, you know, ribbons being out of place. You know, and that's where it's sort of like, why didn't you just do a little bit of research before you started writing a script? And that's where it drives us insane. I'm James Laporta. Thank you for watching The Breakdown.